Welcome to the BBT Podcast. I'm Becca. And I'm Quilly. We're friends that are just trying to be better together. Join us to hear about what it's like to be in between Gen Z and millennial identities. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the first BBT Pod episode. My name is Quilly. And I'm Becca. We're going to be your hosts starting from today. We're excited. Our first episode is just going to be mostly an introduction episode. So we want you to sit back, relax, get to know us a little bit better. And um, we're going to dive into more about ourselves, more about what this podcast is about. And Mm -hmm. we hope you enjoy and come back next week or in two weeks for the next episode after this too. Yeah. So first of all, we're going to capture your attention with our personalities starting with how people call us refer yes, to us our nicknames yeah yeah so my name is rebecca but people usually call me becca or bex a few people call me that how about you quilly oh well everyone calls me quilly nowadays like um but i have like two identities kind of that i associate with my actual name is quillian and then in high school, I guess like people found it hard to pronounce, so everyone calls me Quien from high school. So if I hear that, I know they're from my high school. Um, other nicknames, uh, I don't know. My main nickname is Quilly, and it was given to me by one of my friends in high school called Jenny. Shout out, you might be listening. And she called me the Quillinator. Yeah, so that's where I derived Quilly from, and I've been known as that for the last like eight, nine years. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, I think I remember you introducing yourself as Quien the first time, maybe. You are uh, you were saying your first name, and then you were also saying, well, people call me Quilly, so. And then yeah. that's kind of how people refer to you now. Yeah, so when I went to university, I decided that people were going to pronounce my full name, everything in my name, including that L, Quillian. And speaking of uni, that's also where we met. Yes, exactly. We met in a studying downtown Toronto, studying engineering Ooh, with our rings. We're graduated now, so really excited. If about you're watching that. the video, you'll see the ring. Yes, you'll see the ring. And that is where we met, how we got to know each other. We met in second. No, we went in first year, but we, we only started year. talking. Yeah. Yeah. We only really started to get to know each other maybe second and third year. I would say more third year because we were doing a lab together. Yes, we were partners for so many things. And one thing I remember is that you almost always ended up in my tutorial because yes, our time. names were close. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. Oh, yeah. We were yeah. in like, communication class yes. together. Yes. 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 Shout out to Xu Yao. We love you. <laughs> 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 yes, so then we did a presentation together, and that was fun. We mm-hmm. got to get to know each other there, and yeah, then we just ever kind of then, stayed friends. <gasps> ever since that. then, we did like we always were partners for labs because we yes. would always end up in the same lab section. Yes. And then our favorite thing to do when we finish our lab early <gasps> was to get bubble tea. <laughs> yes, the inspiration for the name. Oh, BBT? or is it? Wow, what yes. does BBT stand for, Becca? It stands for being better together. Oh my god, not bubble tea? <laughs> Dang, yeah. But what exactly does that mean? I guess you'll have to find out later on in this mm. episode. Yep. Yep. But speaking of bubble tea, do you remember or do you know what each of our go-to orders are? I think I know what Quilly's is. Oh my god. Okay, oh you go. Gosh. What is my so, go-to order? Quilly likes no sugar in her bubble teas. So she likes her order at Cha Time is a roasted milk tea <laughs> with zero sugar and 30% ice. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Very, very... That actually, that's that's almost exactly what I always get at Cha Time. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because I remember one time, I think you were... Some, one of our friends were stopping by cha time and then Mm -hmm. that's what you asked for very specific so i was like wow very interesting i like to get no sugar that is my main go-to 
mm-hmm, on like mm-hmm. a warm day or a hot day though some ice is good it is it is very good it's very refreshing yeah okay yeah. i'm gonna take a stab at yours yes take a stab take a stab okay okay so from the our good bubble tea days i remember that you don't really like to venture out into the the unknown yes like, that try... is very correct <laughs> Like, you're not the type to try extravagant orders, like, you know, like the lemon macchiato thing. So, I think your order is a regular pearl milk tea with around 50% sugar and maybe 50% ice. That is exactly what I get. Nice. (laughs) Yeah. Honestly, considering both our orders, we are very conservative bubble tea orders. (laughs) We do, we do. If I'm feeling fancy, though... I usually get more toppings, so I'll get like QQ toppings or um, Three Guys at Coco, which has the, you know, the pudding and the yes. QQ, I think. I don't remember. Nor grass it jelly. Has, like, That's grass, grass jelly. jelly yeah. pudding, and tapioca. Yes, there we go. So then mm-hmm. I would get that, but that's not too common, not too often. Mm-hmm. Pro tip though, that is a really good lunch. I don't know about the nutrition, but it fills you up. Yeah. Have you done that before? <laughs> oh, Is that why you know? Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Speaking of lunch. Ooh. Ooh. I was wondering, Quilly, is there any food that you particularly don't like? Ooh. That's an interesting one because normally they ask you like, what's your favorite food? But here. Yeah. We're different. Yeah, we're different here. <laughs> we do okay, things a think. little bit differently here. Mm, we think different. I think that's like an apple slogan think different is it <laughs> yeah, i is think it? so Do our apple remember. friends out there can confirm yes let us know we're not okay. sponsored no of course not, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> we do have a good friend though i know that i'm going off on a tangent but you see this beautiful white mic that i'm using it was donated to me or well, lent to me i will have to give it back after covid by our good friend matt who is an avid apple fan he would be sponsored <laughs> he would be sponsored. If you have any questions regarding Apple products, specifically the iPad, you can go to him. I remember I took this one class with him and I told him straight up, dude, you should be a salesperson at Apple. You would do so well. I know. I think he took offense. I'm so sorry, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Shout I'm not saying Matt. you're a bad chemical engineer. I'm saying you're a great chemical engineer who would also excel in Apple. Yes, 100%. Okay, back to what we were talking about. It's definitely not apples. I enjoy apples. Um, but the food I least enjoy is probably century egg. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what a century egg is, it's basically this traditional Chinese egg that is preserved how do they eat preserve it? I don't really know. I'm, I don't know either. We'll have to do research on that. <laughs> yeah, I have to research that. But they preserve it in such a way that when you crack the egg open, it's black. And I think it's like kind of see-through-ish. It has it's like, like a bit it of has a... like a greenish hue to it when it's under the right light. Yes. Yeah. So, and it also, when, if you've ever opened one, you would know that it smells very strongly of ammonia, mm-hmm. which is very It's like something straight off of the lab bench. So I can see saying, why that is. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not like that bad. It's just like, I can take it in congee, but if you want me to eat more than I need to for the, then I can't take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, I think mine is a banana which is such a basic fruit i know a lot of people always tell me like how could you not like bananas and i know it's very concerning to some of you maybe but ever since i was younger the first time i had it i didn't really like the texture that much so then that kind of deterred me from it and then as i got older i tried giving it another chance here and there and i still didn't like it so you can't say that i didn't give it another chance when i was older and i still like banana flavored things so i'll eat banana bread Quilly's i'll eat like bread. which Quilly has a really great banana bread <laughs> recipe if you're ever interested and um yeah so i really like banana bread i really like banana chips too which is yeah so but just the banana itself not not a huge fan of that 
I can totally understand. I only yes. like bananas if they're like perfectly ripe. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Makes sense. Otherwise, they're like they they leave that weird taste in your mouth if they're not ripe or they're sour. Okay, now that we've gone over what we like to eat with, mm-hmm. uh, how about something along the lines of what we like to watch? Ooh. Favorite what have we movies? been watching? Yeah, favorite movies. What have we been watching lately? Or what's your favorite movie of all time? Ooh, that's hard for me. So if you know me, you know that I haven't seen that many movies. So it's really hard for me to say like what my top one is. But I feel like the top two or like I guess top movies that I have probably would be Harry Potter. Yes. Because I have recently watched all of them with Quilly actually and read all the books and a huge fan love them and I guess the second one would probably be Knives Out which came out pretty recently I think that that is like the ideal movie genre for me Mm. I like a little bit of comedy a little bit of crime a little bit of thriller just a nice little mix of everything so I would say those are the top for me at this moment but i'm diving into other movies which we will talk about in a few yeah. minutes wow wow wow. Yeah. wow now i also love harry potter um it's not like uh it's not one of my top 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 favorites though i would say my number one uh live action would be inception it i just really like the concept And I know you haven't seen it, which is why I'm not going to spoil anything, even for our listeners. If you haven't seen it, though, please see it. It's really good. And then my top animated movie is Spirited Away, a Ghibli Studio movie. I also highly recommend all Ghibli Studio movies. They're great. Um, But yes, I do love Harry Potter, too. Speaking of which, um, Becca recently reignited my love for Harry Potter. So I had read the books when I was younger, but, you know, things that you read when you're small, you forget them all. Um, so I recently, just like Becca, went through all the books again and fell in love all over again. And that makes me wonder, what house do you associate yourself with? Or, like, what result you got off the online official quiz for uh, Pottermore, I think it's called Wizarding World now. Wizarding World, yes, mm-hmm. Wizarding World. So I recently did it after binging all of the movies. No, I guess maybe in between our binges. And I was like, I wonder what Hogwarts house I'm in. So I did the test and I got Ravenclaw, which I'm honestly really shocked about because I never really thought that I would be a Ravenclaw. I feel like growing up, I always said I was a Gryffindor, but I feel like I only said that because that was the only house I knew, <laughs> which was like... Yeah, the one Harry actually... Potter's in. <laughs> the cool one. I was like, yeah, uh, Gryffindor. <laughs> I love red. <laughs> and then that's the only thing that is like associated with it that I knew. But I think... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm actually a Ravenclaw. I don't know if I would be able to, you know, keep up with Cho Chang, (laughs) keep up with Luna. But that's the result that I got off Pottermore. I can see you as a Ravenclaw, though. Thank you. Thank you. That's a big compliment. For people who are, like, not too sure about what each house means, Ravenclaw is the smart one. It's where all the geniuses go or, like, the cleverest ones. And I totally see that in you. That's such a big compliment. Thank you, Quilly. We all know, people who know us know that Becca's GPA is much higher than mine. Oh my god. Hilarious. So funny. No, but I don't think I could answer the riddles at the door though. That's the that's the problem. Mm -hmm. I remember reading the book and and with that part when Luna and Harry are supposed to go into the Ravenclaw uh common room. Common room, yeah. I was like, dude. Yeah. For those of you who are un- like unfamiliar with it, basically it's a knocker that talks to you and it asks you a riddle. If you can't answer it right or in a clever way, you're locked out of your own like room. Yeah. Which sounds yeah, I couldn't do that. so traumatizing. It does. Like the Gryffindor one, as most of you who've seen the movies know, you just tell it a password and it lets you in. But man... Yeah, and especially because during that part of the movie, it was so intense, like so much was going on. I was like, we're really out here trying to figure out this riddle right now when like so much is about to happen. <laughs> yeah, um, 
I think I would never get in because I associate myself with Hufflepuff, one of the boring ones. So it's not Slytherin where everyone is like evil and selfish, and it's not Gry- Gryffindor where everyone is brave. It's Hufflepuff where people are just, you know, Cedric Diggory, Edward Cullen, that guy, he's there. <laughs> yes. And everyone's favorite. Yeah. I also identify with Hufflepuff most because I took a quiz. I took the Pottermore quiz when I was in high school. And that's the one I've been identifying with. But then I like betrayed myself just a few months ago when Beck and I did it together. And I was a Ravenclaw too. No way. I am not Ravenclaw. I associate myself with Hufflepuff and yellow only. <laughs> oh, it was so funny. I remember sending her or sending you the results that I got. And I was like, LOL, I'm a Ravenclaw. And then you sent yours maybe two seconds after. You're like, I'm a Ravenclaw. The upset. She was very upset. <gasps> Blasphemy. Blasphemy. She was very <laughs> upset about it because she never saw herself as that. But, you know, Quilly, I think you definitely could answer some of those those riddles. Maybe. It would never be right. It would always be a roundabout yeah. way. Yeah. Maybe we would we could work to it. Yeah. Work on it together. Yeah, we would always be together. We would like work on We're always Go ahead. I'm gonna tell you. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> we are always gonna be be better together. <laughs> the name, name of the, of the podcast. podcast guys. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's us roaming around. Hogwarts. Okay. Yes. Yep. Uh, also, we're going to get into it a bit later, but you guys can expect some Harry Potter content. We, we might do full yes, episodes of 100%. Harry Potter. 100%. That is expected. Okay. Um, yeah. So speaking of Hogwarts and, you know, our youth, what is it that you wanted to mm-hmm. become when you were younger? I know we both mm-hmm. did engineering school, okay. but, you know, things can change. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, mine is going to be anticlimactic because uh, when I was younger, other than wanting to receive that Hogwarts letter, I wanted to be two things, two major things. One is a scientist, <laughs> typical, and two, architect. So I really enjoyed two things. One of them was I had this like Lego set when I was younger. It was just like the creative ones. And then I would always like design houses and stuff like that. So I was very into house design and buildings and and stuff like that. But I also really liked the idea of holding two test tubes and flask and just pouring stuff together and making stuff. So yeah, that's what I wanted to be. How about you? That's cool. That's actually really similar to, you know, (laughs) engineering kind of. You know, like working kind of <laughs> lab days, working with test tubes occasionally. Yeah, those were my favorite days. I didn't like the data analysis. I liked the lab. Yeah, stuff. the job stuff was definitely a lot more fun than the data analysis part. I think growing up, I wanted to be a teacher at one point, like back in grade five, maybe. But the reason I wanted to be a teacher wasn't even because I wanted to teach. It was because I thought that teachers were so cool with their two months of vacation. And also (laughs) just because, you know, how a lot of teachers stay in one school for a very long time. So I was like, the friendship that they have is really cute. So I was like, wow, nice. Oh, between each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The nice little Uh. bond. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. It would be kind of fun to, you know, have that with each other because they stay there for years years at a time yeah until they retire mostly yeah. so then they get to know each other really really well and um, i guess it's kind of cool also to see old students come back and talk about what they've been doing and like oh, see yeah. what impact you've made on their lives Ooh, that reminds me i have a quick story about this one time capsule that we did when i was in like grade five and it was to be open in five years. So, but at that time, I I was only in grade 10 when it was to be open. And I didn't have access to a car, so I couldn't go down. I didn't want to ask my parents because it was in the downtown of the city I lived in. And it was like a good 40-minute drive away. So I missed the opening of the time capsule. But I'm sorry, that just reminded uh, me. Time capsule. What did you put in it? Okay, okay. my <laughs> <laughs> So I'm a last-minute worker for the most part. And... 
I, this was super last minute. I forgot that we were closing the time capsule on that day. And we had to include two things, and a souvenir and uh, a, a letter, a written letter. So I wrote the letter last minute. I was like, hi, Quilly. I hope you are where you want to be, something like that. And then I took an eraser out of my pencil case. It was used. And it wasn't just any eraser, though. It was like one of those things you get at Scholastic Book Orders for all you like kids from Canada. Um, and then it was it was one of those hawaiian styled shoes so like a flip-flop it even had the plastic piece sticking out of it and it had the grooves on the bottom so i put that in from my pencil case and i was like this is what i i i, I treasure and i want to see this in five years <laughs> yeah that's actually so cute though <laughs> oh my gosh i feel like i would do the same thing just like last minute just okay i can't think of anything just gonna choose this random thing i found so yeah that's the kind of content you guys can expect you know cute little cute stories. little stories from our childhood and from other points in our life things like that you mm -hmm. know so i was just wondering though you know how we're jumping into this podcasting kind of blind yeah, so blind do you have podcasts that you take inspiration from? Or like what types of podcasts you listen to yourself? Like, would you listen to ours? I would. <laughs> hmm. Good question. Is that even a question? Obviously, of course. We love the sounds of our own voices. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sorry, I digress. Um, yeah. What podcast do you listen to? Better? So I feel like I listen to a lot of comedy podcasts. I listen to, there's this influencer or i guess like she's a youtuber she does a podcast with her boyfriend it's like it's called jenna jenna and julian podcast jenna marbles which i oh. used to watch a lot growing up yes. so i listened to their podcast they played a lot of games unfortunately though mm -hmm. jenna marbles is not doing a bunch of internet stuff anymore she's like taking a break but her mm -hmm. their podcasts were really entertaining they played a lot of games they just talked about life and that's mm -hmm. kind of the stuff that i like i used to also listen to a lot of true crime podcasts which <gasps> okay. which is i love which is good right true crime yeah. i love it but after a it's while scary. it gets to you yeah it, gets to <laughs> it does <laughs> so i couldn't do it anymore i was like listening to it for a oh. while for like every single day i would listen to it on the way to work you mm -hmm. know just like downtime i would listen to it yeah then you like check behind yeah, your shoulder but then i just kept finding myself checking under my bed and like just getting <laughs> scared walking around everywhere and it just wasn't fun anymore so i just kind of stopped yeah. listening to those but i still like them i still like true crime stuff so i will dabble in Same. those every now and then for those of you who really know me, I love watching BuzzFeed Unsolved. It's so good. Shane and Ryan, oh my god. Both the true crime and supernatural. But we'll talk a little bit more about that later. <laughs> In terms of like podcasts that I like to listen to, truth be told, I don't listen to too many podcasts. I wouldn't say that I am verse, well-versed in podcasts because I'm not. But the two I love... Uh, they're also mostly comedy as well and I think you guys see that in our show as well but I really enjoyed the Tableau podcast uh, Tableau is a singer a rapper hip-hop from Korea and he's in a group called Epic High uh, and his podcast it's in English don't worry I, I don't know Korean um, but kind he's of really do. funny I okay I kind of do we'll talk about that later too <laughs> and another one I really enjoy is the office ladies with Jenna Fisher and Angela from the show. And they talk about behind the scenes stuff. So fun stuff. And I hope that our podcast will be fun too. Fun yes, for you. As fun it is as fun at as fun as <laughs> as fun as <laughs> is to make. How do I word that? Anyways, something like that. As fun it is to oh I can't say it either. As fun as, as fun it is as to it make is to yes, make it there we go as fun <laughs> as it is we to got make it. it there we go a bit of a tongue twister there oh i'm super bad at tongue twister yeah me too peter piper picked a pack of pickle <gasps> wait did i just get <gasps> it <gasps> she sells seashells by the seashore okay i think it's perfect time now for us to take a quick break and then when we come back we'll elaborate more onto what you can expect on our Yay. show Yay!
Welcome back from the break, guys. Now we want to talk about what content you can expect from this podcast. We gave you a little dash of salt and pepper in the beginning, but now we'll just be a little bit more clear. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I guess the first thing that we really want to talk about is some personal stories, some funny personal stories, right? Some throwbacks, some nostalgia. We both really like talking about some of our childhood shows that we liked. So mm -hmm. Arthur is a big one. Zabumafu. Yeah, so we have a lot of personal stories and attachments to these shows mm -hmm. and we still talk about a lot of them to this day for those of you who enjoy a little nostalgia run we're going to take you back to our life in the late 90s yes late 90s early 2000s and then we're also going to talk about stories that we've experienced recently too like being recruited attempted recruitment to an mlm which is also known as a pyramid scheme you know what's really funny today? I checked my Google ad recommendations, or it was there's this thing on Google where you can check your uh, what all the assumptions Google make about you. You go to adsettings.google.com, and you can see like everything Ooh. Google assumes about you. And on one of them, it says MLM business opportunities like okay thanks google but i don't want these mlm opportunities yeah mlm is basically multi-level marketing which is just a fancy word for pyramid scheme <laughs> thank you very much google but the oh fact that God. they think i'd be interested in them is kind of sad also it might be because it's like covid and a lot of people are yes, looking for other ways things. to make yes, income yes it might be it might yeah. be dude unfortunate product uh another unfortunate product of the situation yeah i know right so that's very exciting mm -hmm. we also want to talk about pop culture so going through some movies that we have on our list that's a part of mm -hmm. what we're trying to achieve in becoming better together it's kind of going through some of these classic movies that have always been talked yeah. about that we haven't watched i know it's going to be insane for some of you to find out what movies we haven't seen. <laughs> One of the bigger ones is A Lord of the Rings, which is we're, what we're currently watching right now. We just finished watching the first one. And um, mm -hmm. The Godfather is one that we always get recommend mm. recommendations to watch. Forrest, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. The Matrix. Oh, oh yeah, we have not seen The <laughs> Matrix. Seen the Matrix. <laughs> and just a bunch of those type of movies. So if you're interested to hear our reviews on them, we're not film people, like the film majors or anything. But, but that, that's perfect because we can give a perspective from a regular consumer. But... That's what we consider as pop culture. And as this goes on, though, it might evolve. We might talk about other stuff. We could talk about other shows that we haven't seen as well. I haven't seen Game of Thrones. Quilly hasn't seen Breaking Bad. So those are some other things that we might dive into later on. I find it sad that I haven't seen Breaking Bad because everyone, when they find out that we're in chemical engineering, they always go like, oh my god, that's like Breaking Bad, right? And I just be like, yeah, never seen it. <laughs> oh, I know. But the thing is, like, everyone always thinks chemical engineering is very chemistry-based, but it's not very chem chemistry-based. It's more physics. Calculus. Yeah, thermodynamics, things like that, if you know yeah. what that is. Um, but yeah, we get that a lot. I also get, I don't know if you do, but I also get people who go like, oh, do you know the periodic table by heart then? And it's like, uh, I guess at one point we did for a specific course, yeah. but I don't remember everything. Inorganic yeah. chemistry? Yeah. I only know like hydrogen and helium, lithium, beryllium, and I'm not going to go off further because I might yeah. get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe like the shout out to asap sai for writing it maybe like the first two rows of the periodic table but that's it and then the rest is just mm -hmm. a blur a blur and i also get yeah. people asking like so do you know how to you know make crack do you know how to make meth yeah i get that a lot yeah, too which is crazy mm. i think breaking bad has something to do with that but um mm -hmm. yeah you, you wouldn't know <laughs> yeah the closest thing we got to making drugs was like uh 58% pure Tylenol, I think. 58%. Yes. That might kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which you can't take because it's but definitely not pure. 
Yeah, no. no mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. There's some dust in there and yeah. other stuff you don't want to know. Made by an unexperienced, <laughs> you know, student. Uh-huh. That is like what we were... When would we Second made that? Year. When we were like 19? Like, would you trust a 19-year-old being like, this is Tylenol? <laughs> but besides that, there is another section we were going to try doing, which is kind of related to pop culture, but not quite. It's a series of games. So we were going to do things like, because we both have different expertise in different areas, right? Or we're, we like different things, which is totally normal. And for example, I would do uh, a couple of games like, see if this K-pop lyric is real. Because for those of you who know K-pop, there are some crazy lyrics out there. So I can assemble a few and Becca can guess which ones are real. Same could go for real or fake Pokemon names, because I am a huge Nintendo nerd. And I actually (laughs) didn't grow up watching Pokemon that much, which is very surprising for some people. That's okay. I actually didn't watch it much either. I just was more into the games. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And then Becca can teach me a lot too. Like Like true and false, random, urban dictionary terms. Ooh. I'm actually really bad with these. Every time someone says something in like a chat, like... Cap? Yeah. Someone said cap in like an Among Us game we were playing. And I messaged Becca. I was like, what does no cap mean? <laughs> yeah, so we're going to talk about those. Help Quilly get up to speed with some of these Gen Z terminology, which honestly, as mm-hmm. both of us, we're, you know, we're not exactly Gen Z, but we're not exactly millennial. So it's, you know, it's always mm-hmm. a struggle to keep up with the millennials, but also. Oh, keep up with the Gen Zs, but also catch up with the the millennials. So perfectly put. And but the thing is, I consider Becca, you are a Gen Z pro compared to me. I know nothing, but I don't know. But I don't know if you guys know. Oh I think some of you know. But Becca is a huge TikTok star. Oh my God. Okay, yeah. Let's go. We can <laughs> dive into an episode just talking about how I have a freaking one million views on a video. <laughs> what the heck? I can't even believe it. That is it's amazing. actually so funny. I love it's it. So funny. I can't. I'm really proud well, of. Well, thank you. She she got into the Gen Z world. She like, dude, her number of followers is insane. I well, it's insane to me because I have zero. It is not that much, <laughs> guys. Don't worry. But I guess it's I guess it's more than what I started with, which was probably thirty. So thirty is a exactly, lot. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> thirty people have thirty people right. Even have thirty people even listen to this podcast. Yeah. Exactly, dude. <laughs> exactly. And what I find incredible is that a lot of kids these days, I'm going to call them kids, okay, um, they find out about current world topics through TikTok. Which is very cool and very interesting. I feel like you can definitely learn a few things here and there through that, which is very surprising. There's a few hacks that are really cool. (laughs) Very cool. But yeah, speaking of which, we are also going to try to give you our take on current world topics. So Kuli and I are all both really passionate about climate change. We went to the climate march um, 2019, I think. That's when it was. Yeah, yeah, 2019. It was really fun. We had Big posters. crowd, which is crazy. You cannot see that these days. Yeah, we were literally pushed up against people because we did it in Toronto. And it was in front of Queen's Park, which is the provincial parliament. And it was packed. And Kuli's poster actually got featured on TV, <laughs> which is insane. It was like e-talk or something. So it was really exciting. Yeah. Thank you. The thing is, like, I, I would like to say that I didn't come up with this meme. It was a meme that I took off of the internet, but I couldn't give credit because I don't know who made it. And if I describe it, some of you may know what it is. Basically, it's a picture of Leonardo DiCaprio with his, like, up to his shoulders in water like he's swimming in the ocean with sunglasses on and then i put the year 2050 and he's looking for rose so for those of you who have seen the titanic you know that he played jack who was rose's lover and he died by sacrificing the floaty thing to rose by freezing in the water so do i need to explain the meme or do you get it (laughs) i feel like they'll get it (laughs) maybe i'll explain it okay okay 
I, I'm trusting that you guys understand what it would. Hopefully, is. if you've seen the Titanic or you kind of have an idea of what the Titanic is, you probably mm-hmm. will kind of piece it together. Hopefully, we'll post cool. it somewhere. We'll leave it at that. Maybe so you can post see. It on our Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Follow, like, and like follow. and follow the Instagram. <laughs> so yeah. What else will we talk about? Hmm. Oh. Ooh. Mm-hmm. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's something that we briefly mentioned uh in the part one it is unsolved mysteries yes unsolved mysteries which we both love but um yeah we want to dive into those talk about our opinions on them what we think happened yeah you know one day we might be able to crack a case too. yeah one day one day and also we wanted to talk about just random fun facts from around the world that we gathered throughout our lives yeah recently i i snapped about this to everyone i knew because it was such an epiphany for me sea anemones eat crabs the cute little sea anemones that nemo likes to hide in could eat nemo and that just shocked me (laughs) (laughs) i think there's something that nemo does or like that clownfish do that make them not get eaten or something i think so it's like something they have like this ecosystem where it just works where I'm not a marine biologist. I'm sorry if this offends you. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's just fun facts. And I hope that you guys can learn something from listening to us talk as well. 100%. And have you ever seen inside of a kangaroo pouch? It's not what you think <gasps> it would look like. No. It's not fluffy? It's not. Oh, no. Okay, I do not want to think about that. There's a reason why I chose to study engineering yeah, and not life science. I'm so shocked looking at the inside. I thought it would be fluffy. It's not at <gasps> all. I heard that's where they they get their nutrients. Like, they can feed from the mother from inside the pouch. Which is pretty cool. Oh, this is going to be a side tangent, and we're going to have a lot of those. But have you ever seen a cartoon character called Doraemon. Oh, no, who is that? It's a little blue <laughs> kid. It's a it's a blue robot that has a pocket that he can pull anything out of. Yeah, it's a really old Japanese series, but I watched it when I was a kid because it was very popular in China. And then basically like he can pull out anything and my favorite tool that he has is a door that takes you anywhere. Dude, mm-hmm. that's very useful. Yeah. It's a very cute pink door, and then when you open it, you're just wherever you want to be. I think that would be the superpower that I would want to have the most, being able to just (gasps) go places. I guess, like, apparate if you watched Harry Potter, you know. Ooh, apparition. Yeah. But what scares me about apparating is the fact that you can lose a part of your body. Yeah, they call it splinching in the books. And uh, Ron who is the redhead character that is Harry's sidekick, always splinches himself. Yes. So I always thought that that was the scary part of apparating. I think you would be good at it, though, because you can drive. And I think that it just requires... Okay, my theory is that if you're good at driving, you'll be good at apparating because it requires a certain amount of focus. Oh, okay. And you know where you want to okay, go. Okay, okay. Makes sense. Makes For sense. people who are like, right? If you're scared of driving, then you'd be scared of apparating, too. Mm-hmm. That's my theory. I don't know random theory (laughs) but teleportation is great but i always wanted to fly my yeah my favorite dreams were the ones where i would be flying over a nice landscape or something it gives me so much peace and i feel like i can see the world from a better angle (laughs) except i didn't think about the physics you know kids don't think about that like my ears would pop my eardrums would explode yes you know (laughs) all of those things (laughs) Oh, I just realized. But in a world where humans could fly, that wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So yeah, that is a taste of what we're going to cover. Yes, very exciting. Looking forward to the other episodes that we have planned and Mm -hmm. doing more of these bi-weekly. Yes, that is our goal for now. Maybe one day we'll be so good that we can do it Yes, but right now we're starting slow, especially, you know, remotely. (laughs) It's a lot more challenging. But one day we might do weekly and that's something we'll look forward to. one day, yeah, you will also be able to see us together in the the same same room. room. Hopefully (laughs) soon. Ah, soon. 
Let's hope for the best. Yes. And we hope for the best for you guys until the next episode. Yeah, thank you guys for listening or watching if you're watching on mm -hmm. YouTube. Remember to wear your masks. Remember to subscribe and follow us for more so you can stay up to date on the mm -hmm. latest episodes. Also check us out on Instagram. And YouTube. Yeah. So we'll see you guys next week or uh, whenever we upload. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the BBT Pod. Our music is by our friend at soundcloud.com slash M-I-E-R-U-K-O. See y'all next time. Bye. Bye.